So this is the BST768 Dimension uh, 3D printer, made by Dimension I should say. Um, we're looking inside of the build environment here. There's our build tray. Um, there's you know the two locks on the side there, one on either side. You pop those to the left or to the right and the tray will actually slide out. When you fire up your machine for the first time, it's going to take a little while to heat up, so be prepared for that. It'll say initializing, starting up on the screen there as it goes through its self-diagnostics. Uh, it'll run the z-axis up and down, the x and y side to side and all that. Uh, basically just runs the machine through all of its functions and makes sure that they all work and that there is nothing malfunctioned or out of order or in the way of anything. So it just runs itself through a quick self-check, make sure everything's in ready to go and uh, as soon as that's done and it's up to operating temperature, and then you can go ahead and start your first model. And right here is your status screen and this tells you what the machine is doing. Right now it's idle means it's not doing anything. Uh, the queue is empty, which means we haven't sent any parts to it. And then the material remaining, uh, we've got 10% of our modeling material left, and we've got 83% of our support material left. So if you look in the Dimension software, the uh, Catalyst EX, that'll tell you exactly how much material that is in cubic inches, and you can see that there. Um, on the buttons here, we've got wait for part. That means it's waiting for the part, and once you send one to it from your computer, that'll change to uh, start the model. Uh, material load, you'll use that button when you're going to load new material into there, uh, modeling and support. And you got your standby mode and your maintenance. Um, all of that information, the standby mode is you know, self-explanatory, you press that button to put it to standby. standby. Uh, that cools the environment down, turns the lights off and just saves on power uh, without having to go through a full complete reboot up. And then the maintenance button, everything that's in there is in the owner's manual. So you can get all the information on that from there. Uh, this video is just a basic on how to build something in it. Okay, now that we've got our printer set up, we're going to go over to our computer. We're going to open up the Catalyst EX software. Uh, it's pretty simple from here. It shows you uh, the basics of what the printer is doing and it gives you a virtual build environment so you can see what you're building. So let's open a C uh, STL here. We're going to go to File, click on that. We're going to open STL. Um, I have one down here that I've built before so we're just going to grab one of these. And these come up every time you pick one. So uh, just pick on whatever one you like and, uh, and grab it there or you can open one from there. You can also insert a CMB if you have one that's already done. So we're going to go ahead and select uh, this little telescope washer here um, and open that up. So uh, when we open it you can see here it's saying that the STL is very large. Would you like to change the STL units to millimeters? And yes we want to do that. By default it opens in inches. Um, that's just the way the software works. Uh, of course this was built in millimeters uh, in our CAD software. So we're going to go ahead and convert that to millimeters. And there's our part. Uh, this is just a simple washer I was using for a telescope a while back. So um, here it is. You can take a look at it here and you can actually examine your part again even though you did in your other software. You can take a look at it here. You can spin it on its X, Y, and Z axis. You can take a look at um, all different sides of it. If there's any flaws in your design, this is where they're going to show up. So if you uh, have a, a break somewhere, it'll show up in black if it does load. Usually it'll just pop up an error and tell you that there's something wrong with the, the part itself. Okay, now over to the right here, you've got your properties of what you're building. Uh, you've got your layer resolution. You can select 0 0.130, you can select 0 0.0100. Uh, the model interior and the support fill, um, we're going to go ahead and go with solid on this part. Um, you can also choose sparse, low density if you're building a, a one-off part for like proof of concept or something. But if you're just building your everyday parts, you're going to choose solid. Uh, your support fill, it has smart, basic, sparse, breakaway, and surround. Um, they say smart actually is the smartest, but I've noticed that it isn't. Sparse seems to work out pretty good for me, so I use that most of the time. So we're going to select sparse. Um, Number of copies, we want one. We only want to print one of these, so if you want to do more, you could. And we already changed it to millimeters here, so we're going to go to our scale, which is uh, one. We're just going to build it right at the scale that we loaded in, because we're in millimeters, we know the size, we know it's good. So uh, we're going to keep that out. You can change the value, though, if you like. Now that that's ready, all you have to do is go and click on Add to Pack. And what that'll do is it'll process the STL. It's going to lay out the tool paths for the 3D printer to use. So everything that's red, that's the part that's laid out. The gray is the support material. So it's going to lay a baseline of support material to hold it. Everything's ready to go. And uh, we can go ahead and go to our pack 
here's our pack. Now this is basically just a virtual build tray. Those, uh, the diagram here, the squares, are the exact same squares that you'll see on your build tray. So you can use that for reference when you put any part in here and place it wherever you like on the build tray. So um, you'll notice when we actually pull the piece out of the machine, it's gonna be right here because this is where we placed it. So now that that's there, we can check over here. We've got the one part, the washer telescope, that's the one that we're making. And you can see there the model material and support material that's gonna use. And it says it's gonna take about 11 minutes to print. Um, if you had multiple items, they would show up there. Uh, since we're only printing one, you only see one. So we're gonna go ahead and click on print. It's gonna establish connection to the printer and send the part over. So we'll pick it up over there. Um, it's going to tell you here also how much material is left in the machine. We've got 5.74 inches of our red right now, uh, 46.93 cubic inches of the uh, support. So that's what that is. Uh, it's pending the start. So it's waiting for us to go over to the machine and press the start button and it's ready to go. So let's go over to the machine and start the part. So now we go over to our machine and on the screen it says it's ready to build it. The pack that we saw in the computer with the telescope washer in it. It says the material remaining, telling if you have enough, which we already saw on the computer. So all you have to do at this side is make sure that your build tray is put in place. And the way those go in, it's very simple. There's just two little tabs, and you just slide those to either side. One, two, and then you grab by the handle, and the tray comes out. There's four little grooves that it actually locks into there. And for the other uh, build trays, you would use these other holes, but these ones just use this. So you lay it down, slide it back into place, click the two locks and our build tray is nice and clean. You want to make sure that that's nice and clean uh, so the product will actually stick to it good. And then back there you have your waste collector and this just lifts up, pops out. You want to clean that out every time you build something. There'll be excess material in there so you just make sure you keep that clean. Make sure your brush up here stays clean. It's really warm. There's fans in here that are blowing hot air across it at all times. But you want to keep that clean and this clean at all times. And of course your build tray. So we know everything's good in there. So we can go ahead and close up the door. And we'll come over to the buttons here. And we're going to press start model because we're ready to start it. So we'll press that. There we go. And it's going to lock. And then on the screen, it's going to confirm that you did that. It says it's building it. And now it's warming up. The temperature is in Celsius on this, it's not Fahrenheit. So your head temperature is 102 degrees Celsius. The environment is 63 degrees Celsius. So that's gotta warm up for a little while. So you gotta wait for the machine to warm up and as soon as it's ready, it's gonna start the build. Okay, so I wasn't here and it just started. I walked away for a few minutes and it started uh, going on me, but I paused it for a minute so I could show you. I um, mean, you can do this at any time. You can hit the pause button and then hit resume. But what it does, we sent the file over to it and the machine warmed up and it says it's ready to go and now it's ready to go so it's uh it started to lay down the base and as you can see it laid down the red first and the reason it does that is it to give the support material something to stick to so in between the first layer of support it will lay down a little bit of the model material and that'll make it stick really good to the base so now it started to lay that down we hit resume so it should kick right back over here in a minute There we go, now we got it in focus. So it should kick over there in just a minute and start going again. And here it goes, it cleans the head off, brings the build trip to where it needs to be, and now it's laying down the support material. And as you can see, it lays it in a really, really fine line. Let's see if we can get that in there, there you go. And that's pretty much it. It's gonna build that up. Um, It'll be ready in, oh, that's another key feature here. You can come over here, press this button at the bottom, show time. And what that does, it tells you how much of it is done. So it's it. it's got nine minutes left on it and it's 17% complete. So of course, both those numbers will change. One will go up and one will go down. It'll say the completed uh, percentage will go up as the time goes down. So it's gonna keep on building. We'll check back on it a little bit. Um, Really, the only, only other things you can do here is there's the pause button, so you can pause it, pause the actual build, so if you see something wrong or you need to leave and don't want to watch it, whatever, you can hit pause, and you can turn the lights of the interior off by pressing that button. I'll show you that one here. Look in there. Lights off. Lights on. Very simple. It gives you lights off, lights on. That's about all you can do. So really nothing else we can do here except for wait for it to build, and it's cooking along pretty fast.
All right, so as we can see now, we're at about 65% complete. We have three minutes remaining on our build. Um, that'll keep counting. As you can see, the completion rate is going up as the time goes down. It'll do that throughout the entire build. Each the lights will turn off after about 10 minutes of not touching any buttons on the machine. Uh, they will shut off uh, just to conserve power. Um, you can manually turn them off and you can manually turn them back on. Uh, you can go into the settings and change that to have lights always on if you'd like. In the settings you can do that. Um, or you can just have them shut off as they do to save on power. Um, just in this last what, 57 seconds we've been talking here though, we're already at 74% and it's got about two minutes left. Okay, we are just about complete. As you can see, it says 99%, zero on the time, so it's got about 1% left to do. It's built up pretty high there. And the part isn't much bigger than that. There we go. So now it's complete. The build tray will cycle down to the bottom of the build compartment. And you'll hear a click. And that is the door unlocking. So now that the door is unlocked, you can open up the door. And there's our finished part. Now you can take this out. I found it's best to take them off of the build tray as soon as it finishes building or as quick, as close to that as possible. The reason being is that the build tray remains warm. Inside the environment here, there's a heater in here. It's basically just a small oven that keeps everything warm. So if you do it while it's still in here, it easily breaks away. So there's our completed part. It's just a simple washer, uh, very high resolution, very, very nice printing on this machine. And then you have your support or your base material, support material that's still left on there, which breaks away a little harder. The finished part comes off clean, but you're always going to have your support material left. And you can use a little spackling putty or, or just a knife, and it just pries it right away. And there's your finished part. You're done. And it was that simple. Uh, from here, you would unlock the tray and take that on out, and you'll dump that in the trash. So once that's all dumped off, you put a clean tray back in, lock it into place, and you're ready to start your next piece. So after you've removed your part and closed the door, the machine is going to ask you, is the part removed? And yes it is, so we'll go to the button right below that. It's going to ask you yes or no. Kind of hard to see here, there you go. So we got yes or no, and you just press the corresponding button with if it is or done or not. And yes it is, we're going to place yes. It'll go back to being in its idle state. The queue is empty, meaning it has nothing waiting to come. And uh, back to our support material, mod material, whatever we have left. And it's waiting for a part. So everything's ready to go there. Okay, so that's the BST 768 by Dimension. Um, if there's anything else you know, need to know, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.